So Christ was sitting on the what was called the Mount of Olives, and he, and this story goes like this. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? So, so here Christ begins a, a quite an interesting description of the sign of of the of his coming, his second coming, and of the end of the world. Now, um, my comments on this are, uh, as we will see a little later, that what he what he really meant by the coming was the coming of of his consciousness to earth, and what he meant by the end of the world was the end of the world as it was then and the beginning of something very new and wonderful on earth. Okay. That's just something that's often overlooked. And to continue on, that was my cat Lucy there. What Lucy? And to continue on. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. All right, so this is about the false Christ. And um, just from my own observation, um, The problem, one of the problems that we have today is that there are many different versions of Christianity and many other religions in the world, and each one is proclaiming in its own way, I am the Christ, okay? But, but Christ himself, whom Christ consciousness can't be divided into, into sects and religions and beliefs of the mind. Christ consciousness, as we will see a little farther, farther on, is much more... Um, it's almost a physical thing. It's a light. It's it's a, a new light that that we can. S he describes it as as physical light, but physical light is only the physical manifestation of a light that includes many layers or dimensions of reality. So so thoughts in the mind and divisions that the mind makes of of. Christ consciousness into religious groups and so forth. I I I feel that these are, in a way, the false Christ that he's talking of, and so I hope I haven't offended anyone. <laughs> but but it seems to me that that Christ consciousness is much greater than any of that. You know, it's just incredibly much greater. So this next part here. Um, it pretty much shows the headlines that we see in the newspapers today. Now, mind you, this is not necessarily the state of the world, but it's it's the state of our belief in how the world is. And so, Christ's prophecy in this regard has been fulfilled by what I'd call, in another blog, I called it the Associated Press Mental Filter. So. Here are the headlines, according to Christ, and, and in fact, that's what we see today. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Okay, so, so what we have here I feel is is a rising up a, a rising up of fear in the in amongst humankind and this fear is is cre this 
fear is creating all these headlines. That's that's how I look at it in the in terms of co-creating our reality. But but other people who don't know the power that they have to co-create reality will imagine themselves enmeshed in a causal realm and and carried along in a tide of of, of ill tidings, you know, uh, wars and rumors of wars, fears of uh, these might be psychic wars that will take place as people sort through their ego issues and um, as as telepathy becomes worldwide and as as people finally realize that 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 striving against each other doesn't bring them happiness and that happiness is only found in the heart so all of these events that that are sp spoken of whether they be uh, in the astral realm, in the fourth dimension, as people expand into the fourth dimension during this, the great time of the great shift, um, or whether they be actually acted out in the in the real world, or simply ratcheted the emotions of them ratcheted up through headlines that are that are very incendiary towards fear and and anxiety and upset. In any case, all of these things presage the coming of Christ consciousness because, because people will finally know that because Christ speaks of famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Um, so, so the notion that wealth uh, or, or physical security is our, our true home and our true safety will go away and people will, will turn to faith instead and they will turn to, to love and com supporting each other instead. That's how I see it in the, in the broad sense. And then this business about nations rising against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Well, of course, this has been the history of the world, has it not? But, but I think um, also as people expand into the fourth dimension, into the feeling world, and become uh, the world becomes telepathic, then then this business about group versus group will come to the fore because uh, people only ascend one by one. They only inherit the keys to the kingdom of God from Christ, not from a group. Okay, and so people are grouping together again for safety they're turning to wealth for safety right and and all of these things will be shaken up and and people will look towards other other possibilities but to get back to what's happening going to happen in the psychic realm imminently very soon is that people in groups will start encountering people in other groups with other beliefs all right and and there will be psychic wars along those lines until people settle into um, the notion that everyone is, is on this free will planet is able to have their own beliefs and that in fact that is the way this reality functions, you see. So, so that's coming up, that part is pretty much coming up. Right now what's happening is um, that group, well, the groups that I know are, are creating, um, uh, what's it called, sacrificial victims to to reinforce their group identity, I being one of them, so I can convert. I can talk about this pretty easily. Okay, so I I want to relate and align only with God, right? And the groups that I've been involved with are are uh, their leaders are turning them against me and creating hostility against me, so as to solidify their own ranks. Um, I, there's a name for this, right? I would call it scapegoating. I've written about scape scapegoating in another blog if you want to look it up. Um, so, so this is one aspect of, of nation rising against nation and kingdom against kingdom. It's one of the first things that, that um, groups do, whether they be nations, kingdoms, associations, uh, political groups, uh, economic groups, whatever it is, right, church groups. Um, they, like in the witch hunts of Salem, they find people that they they can turn against and uh, kill or pillory or however it is on the psychic plane, and and this is supposed to solidify the group. Okay. Secondly, 
the next thing is that a group will try, like a kingdom will try to take over another kingdom. As has been the case in the, in the, um, in the war of the United States against a, a small group of, of very um, religiously fervent people in the Middle East, you know, we have tried to put down, to put down their um, cultural values and their, their beliefs about chastity and faith and, and, um, and adherence first to God, only to God and we have tried to destroy them completely. So, um, so in a way, that's scapegoating again, not nation against nation. Um, coming up are the big, big bads, nations against nations, and ideologies against ideologies. And, and people, when the dust settles, we will have Christ consciousness to continue. Now this is about, oh, what do you know? This is about that um, scapegoating thing. This is when people's heart open a little wider and groups attack them uh, for a number of different reasons they attack. This has happened to me as my heart opened is that groups have banded together on the psychic plane to to stop my heart from, from being open. and. And there are a number of reasons for this, but I think in general, as people had ex life experiences in the third dimension, incarnation after incarnation, they became very leery about keeping their hearts open because of all of the um, soul wounding that was going on and uh, actually the danger of keeping the heart open. It's a very valiant thing to do to keep the heart open, okay? So... Um, this is what I think about that is that, and the other thing is that when one person's heart is open and they're not the group leader, then the group leader looks bad about it because the heart is the source of great, incredible outpouring of energy. And it makes a person a very powerful co-creator of reality, a very, very powerful person, whether they be male or female. And so it makes the leader of a group look bad if somebody else has all that power. And not only that, the state of soul wounding in the, in the world today is such that, um, that, that people long for that power and that relationship with the divine. They long to no longer be separate from all that they are. And they don't, they don't know how to reach out for that. And so the result of that is when they run across someone whose heart is open, they latch onto that person in any chakra that they can. Anytime that person is feeling weak or tired or is sound asleep, these, the, the fractals of these people, the soul wounding, the shadow aspects of these, of these otherwise very good people latch on and, and leech energy. Um, from the person whose heart is open. So, so there are a number of things going on like that, and Christ describes this very well. He says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Okay, so, so in finding our hearts, we will go through this journey of, of discovering hatred and, and, and coming to terms with hatred and then turning to the light. That's what I think. All right, this is getting kind of long, so I'm going to continue in another video. <laughs> it's pretty interesting reading, don't you think? <laughs>